Special thanks to industry leaders, Parts Canada, and Drag Specialties. We support the sport. Metzler ME880 Marathon, what Biker TV rides on. Dealey Harley-Davidson Canada. Welcome to Biker TV, by bikers, for bikers. This week on Biker TV, Bike Night at Royal Distributing, Diner Tunes with Bruce, Kelowna BC's Creator West, but first, Tech Tips with Wally. Hi, my name is Wally Beasler. I've been a Harley-Davidson instructor at Canada's only Harley-Davidson Technical Training Centre, Grand Prairie Regional College, Fairview Campus, for 23 years. Prior to those 23 years, I worked in the industry in various Harley-Davidson dealerships, and I've been riding Harley-Davidson's for most of my life. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about brakes. Two different styles of brake fluid that Harley has used in recent years. First one we'll have a look at is, is DOT5. It's a silicone based brake fluid. It has some properties that uh, are, 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 are quite nice. It has a high boiling point, about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, the higher the boiling point you can get for your brake fluid, the better it is because as things boil, they expand. We don't want that happening with our brake fluids. Um, it does have some properties that uh, we got to watch for though. This particular brake fluid, the DOT5, um, although it won't absorb moisture, it will absorb air. So we've got to be careful about that. You know, one of the tendencies when you pick something up is to, because we have to shake everything, just to kind of grab it and maybe give it a shake. And if you catch yourself doing that, don't use that fluid. Um, what we've now done is just create a million little bubbles of air in the brake fluid and we enter it into the brake system of the motorcycle and from there on we're going to have uh, spongy brakes, we're going to have trouble bleeding the brakes. The second brake fluid we'll, we'll talk about is uh, DOT4. Now, DOT4 has uh, a little bit different char characteristics um, than the DOT5 does. This is a petroleum based uh, brake fluid. Um, it also has a, it's hydroscopic so what it does, this will actually absorb uh, moisture from the air It'll absorb, absorb moisture. Um, if you just leave the bottle sitting open, um, you can contaminate it, so you shouldn't even uh, use it. We do have two types of brake fluid. Which one does your bike take? How do you know? Right on top of your reservoir, there's a little placard or some writing on top that'll tell you it's either DOT4 or DOT5. You don't choose what you put in your bike. The manufacturer does. If your, if your boiling point has been lowered from, from water that's been drawn into the, into the DOT4, what will happen is it'll expand. Once it expands, it's going to put your brakes on a bit more. It's going to create more heat. It's going to put your brakes on a bit more. And if it's really contaminated, it can actually come to the point where it could lock your brakes up when you didn't want it to lock up. You know what happens then? You probably fall down. You know, it is very important that you don't uh, somehow accidentally mix DOT4 with DOT5. Uh, there's another indicator that uh, should ring a bell to you, is the color of them. If you have a light colored brake fluid in your system, and you grab a bottle and you're, you're maybe talking, topping up your system and it's a dark colored fluid that's going in there, don't do it. Uh, DOT4 is light colored, DOT5 is dark colored, they don't mix. The colors don't match, don't put them together. Yeah, there may be a time when you're not sure if you have any moisture in your brakes or if, if, you've, if you've gotten some in there. Maybe you've, uh, for some reason, had your cap off and you think, gee, I wonder if it has absorbed some moisture. That can be checked. If you take it to your dealer, he may have one of these brake, li brake liquid testers. And what this does, it tests how much liquid is in, is in the brake fluid. We've got a green light, says it's okay. We have an orange light that'll tell us if we have anywhere between less than one to two percent. We have a red light, three to four percent. 
at that point your fluid should be changed now, right away. So let's just have a look at some brake fluid we have here. The first container I have brake fluid straight out of the bottle. Okay, here's our second container. I put a little bit of water in, you can see we've got 1%. Now that doesn't mean your brake fluid is so contaminated you shouldn't use it. You might think about changing it though if it's in the shop already. Look at that, red right to the top. If you see that, or if the tech sees that, he's going to recommend that you change your brake fluid now. Don't even leave the shop with it, change it. After the break, the Royal Distributing Wednesday Bike Night in Guelph, Ontario. Dragon Jeans, what biker TV rides in. Why pay more? Check us out. Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader. We have parts, accessories, and lots more for all makes of cruisers, V-Twin, and Metric. Canada's largest selection of helmets and clothing. Shop our website, shop by phone, or visit any one of our huge superstores. Why pay more? Check us out. Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader. Closed captioning by Hogtunes. Audio solutions for the great American cruiser. Well, I'm never gonna cry again. We're at Bike Night in Guelph at Royal Distributing. We do Bike Night uh, eight weeks during the summer in support of our local charities. Ours particular one is the Children's Wish Society. Uh, we probably have, oh, about 300 bikes out here today. The uh, KTM race team's out here. Um, it's a great place for bikers to get together and enjoy an evening. Well, the Canadian Motorcycle Cruisers is a, is a family-oriented riding club. Uh, with over 5,500 members across Canada, with 83 chapters across Canada. Uh, strictly all makes, all models, fun riding club, uh, just a, a social good time for anybody who likes to ride their bikes. I swear I'm never gonna love again. I'm downhearted in I race for the ladies class. I'm going to be doing the Eastern series of the Nationals this year and I race at KTM 150. My first motocross race was a National. I had no idea. My dad threw me on the line and said go get them and there was 40 other bikes and it was very intimidating but since I kind of started out as big as I could get everything else just seemed really easy after that. Being with a team is great, like motocross is mostly an individual sport, but getting to be able to work with other racers and have more people there supporting you when you're racing or having a hard time one day is great, like having that support is amazing. Everyone on the team has been working really hard and they're super fast guys, so it's great to see a group of fast people working together to accomplish something bigger. My dad got me into it when I was really young and throughout the years, women's racing has gotten so much bigger, like especially this year, it's just boomed. So many girls with older brothers who race, with boyfriends who race, you know, they're like, they don't want to sit on the sidelines anymore. They want to get into it and they want to be part of the action. So it's great to see a lot of these girls coming out and we're starting to have full gates even at the nationals and girls getting factory rides. And I think that pretty soon we'll be right up there with the guys.
2008 um, Canadian champion MX2, 2009 second place. So the last two years have been really good. Fantastic. Well, uh, what's the best thing about KTM bikes? They're really fast and they're uh, reliable and you know with uh, the great team really the whole KTM Royal Distributing uh, is an awesome team to be a part of. We got uh, you know it's a five uh, five rider team we got two riders in the MX2 class two riders in the MX1 and we got one uh, girl racer and uh, five riders five mechanics you know, Andy White is the team manager, and uh, the season's going all right. You know, for me, it's been a little rough. I've had, uh, I separated my shoulder the week before the season started, so I've been kind of behind the eight ball all year long, and uh, we had two weeks off into this weekend, so I've healed up some and looking forward to uh, the next few races. Through the months of uh, June, July, we have a bike night every Thursday night, and it runs from about 6 o'clock until almost dark. And tonight we had the KTM guys show up, and, and a great night like that for lots of fun. Ride for KTM Royal Distributing and um, ride MX1. Um, well, it's a pretty good series, you know, and uh, they they're really fast here, and um, I really like it, you know, because they got a lot of sponsors, and uh, we have a tough time back in Europe now, so. Um, and you know, it's really the people are really nice to me here, and uh, I like it really much. When we come back, we're in Burlington, Ontario, checking out the dyno with Bruce at Dynatunes. Dragon Jeans, the authentic motorcycle jeans. Biker TV rides safe in Dragon Jeans. Dragon Jeans, what's covering your butt? Advanced Welding Techniques, training for success. Come see our new virtual training lab at advancedwelding.ca. That's a guy who's just horsepower hungry. He's always trying to figure out a way to get a couple more horsepower to beat his buddies. <laughs> the whole business is based on testosterone. You don't have to sacrifice power to have good fuel economy. You don't have to sacrifice fuel economy to have performance. You build dual maps into, into the system so that they perform properly when you're just cruising and when you need power, it's there for you to go. Well, 
Well, if you're tuning with a power commander, they're, they're relatively simple. Um, what people are trying, trying to do is bolt on accessories, usually exhaust systems, and the whole engine will change in its performance with a different exhaust system. So we're trying to match the engine to the exhaust and the intake, intake systems on it. Well, car carburetors are a whole, they're, they're a different breed than fuel injected uh, tuning. It's, to be honest with you, until I bought a dyno many years ago, I, I didn't really truly understand jetting carburetors. With a dyno, it's so simple and it just makes the bike run so well after it's done. You know, it's tested, you don't have to drive it out in the road and feel whether it's right. It just, it's just perfect when it comes off the dyno. Loading a motorcycle onto the dyno is, is relatively simple. It's a matter of uh, driving the bike up onto the dyno, uh, ensuring that the wheel position is correct on the dyno, and hooking up two um, air fuel ratio sniffer tubes into the exhaust system, hooking up an exhaust so we get rid of the carbon monoxide out of the room, hooking up to the engine control system so that we can monitor all the temperatures and different parameters that are going on in the bike, hook up to a power commander, and be able to uh, to be able to go in and start setting all the, the proper tuning functions. Loud pipes are, you know, higher performance. What what do you say to that? No, it's it's. I don't believe it's true because every pipe, and I've tested. A lot of them, every pipe is different. Every one, uh, every every pipe that we put on is different. Every manufacturer causes different things to happen to the engine's performance. Some of them go up in power. A lot of them drop in power. There are uh, a lot of things being said about performance ratings. Until you put them on and put it on the dyno, it's the only way to find out what the pipe is actually doing. Well, the mobile dyno was my first creation to uh, to start tuning bikes just on a wide scale uh, rather than being restricted to one location. I wanted to be able to go to Windsor and Sarnia and Ottawa and Thunder Bay and the different places around rather than just being stuck in one place. It, um, I wanted to be able to service more, more of the clientele rather than just here in the GTA. Well, actually, the yeah, we, we've got a real good right-hand man here. <laughs> the the mobile part of the dyno work is a lot of fun. We get to meet a lot of people. Uh, there's all sorts of events that we go to that a lot of them are party oriented. So it's it's like you're working, having fun, meeting new people all the time. It's a tremendous amount of fun. City to city, town to town. We bolted them on, and when we bolted them on, it actually lost horsepower. It lost about two horsepower and probably five foot-pounds of torque, because they, those, those headers run really lean for some reason, but then uh, retuned, made, it was up to, it's basically, it's a, it's a 103, a 2008 uh, Street Glide with a 103, your 575 uh, cams, 585 cams, and um, simple head job on it, and it's making 108 foot pounds of torque, 109 foot pounds of torque, and 98 horsepower. Stick around after the break, Kelowna, BC, and Creator West. Choose one of our existing audio kits or design your own. Hogtunes, audio solutions for the great American cruiser. It's the number one uh, training facility for motorcycle mechanics in Canada. The course here is amazing. The teachers are amazing. This is where it's at. Biker TV is proudly supported by 
Hip Cycle, Expert Harley-Davidson Service. Creative Chaos Tattoo, not for the weak of heart. SBB, Ontario's Ultimate Biker Bar. Dynatunes, Motorcycle Tuning Experts. MotorcycleInsurance.ca, we insure your passion. Jeff Vanderzam with Creator West Custom Motorcycles out here in Kelowna, BC. It all started here in Kelowna almost four years ago for me. Uh, however, it started probably six, seven years before that when I hooked up with the boys at Creator in Toronto. Um, got slowly dragged into the custom world and the more you get dragged in, the faster and the funner it becomes. So. Uh, about four years ago, I'm sitting semi-retired, maybe a little too much time on my hands, and decided to pick up a little shop that was here in town. And uh, we opened up April 1st, 2007. Uh, had a really good run for three years and building a big clientele uh, from service to detail to parts, accessories, clothing, whatever. And it just kind of exploded. and. The opportunity came up for this location to open a new shop and go big. And we grasped it and here we are. About 15,000 square feet we're working with. Um, pretty much all up to date shop. We've added a dyno, uh, in-ground dyno so we can accommodate uh, the performance on bikes and trikes. Well, it, it kind of came from the old shop we did have. It was much smaller, a little over 4,000 square feet, but it had the wood trim around the walls. It had the brown tones. Um, you know, instead of putting a building up like this and using all gray and black and keeping it industrial and cold, we, we knew the feel we had in the old shop and our clients really were hoping, you know, we'd be able to keep that same feel. involved a little bit in music most of my life uh, with my sister and just the old managing bands and stuff back in the day but uh, we wanted to keep that we wanted to keep the venue here for our concerts that we put on every year uh, open up the venue maybe for two smaller acts so we can do some smaller day concerts just keep music bikes people that's the whole idea have fun with it fortunate to have uh, the experience in our Toronto shop that have been doing it for I don't know 14 years so so to have that uh, background with the boys out there uh, and, and obviously getting to know people like Arlen Ness and Eddie Trotta and guys that are in the industry that everybody knows uh, Roger Goldhammer here in town having good friends and all of those fellas uh, just opens so many doors and, and allows me to admire those that have been successful at a trade that I'm fairly new to. No, how does that, it's got to be really unique having uh, be in the local shop for Roger. Well, you know, he, he, he's obviously very successful in everything he's done and, uh, and to have him pop in and visit me on a regular basis and see what we're doing and, uh, and give us the thumbs up too. You know, he, he appreciates what we're trying to bring to the industry, uh, helping keep it alive, helping make it grow. Um, 
from all angles, not just a shop just fixing bikes, but try and tie it all together. And uh, hey, we get people that ride in here on anything and everything. And to me, I can pull up at a light on my chopper and somebody pull up on their old Virago beside me and I'm the first to say to them, hey, just be thankful you're riding because there's a lot of guys that would love your bike to ride. So to me, it's a passion. My dream probably has already been accomplished, and that is having friends in the industry that acknowledge what we're doing and like what we're doing and, and like to be part of it. And so my dream's probably accomplished, but there's always more. Next week on Biker TV, we're behind the scenes at Mossport for the Parts Canada Superbike Series and Tech Tips with Wally. Special thanks to Biker Coffee, made by bikers for bikers. The Motorcycle Ride for Dad, fighting prostate cancer Canada-wide. Royal Distributing, check out the new store in Whitby, Ontario. Well, baby, she's in love with a man.